Good afternoon. Welcome to the Press Center of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Here is our weekly update of the situation in the operations area of the Joint Forces from 11th to 17th February 2019. During the last week, the enemy continued violation of Minsk agreements and has stick to tactics of sudden shellings by using infantry weapons, anti-tank missiles, different calibers, mortars. In general, the situation was quite tense. Over the past week, from 11th to 17th February 2019, Ukrainian defenders' position fell under provocative fire by Russian occupation troops for 64 times. Thus, on February 11th, the enemy has fired more than 30 mines of 182 mm. Moreover, on February 13th, Russian occupation troops have shelled 33 100 mm, 120 mm mines against positions of our defenders. What is more, on February 14th, more than 60 120 mm and 20 82 mm mines were fired by the enemy. On February 15th, 48 mines, which are forbidden by the Minsk agreements, were shelled. On February 17th, enemy fired 55 120 and 82 mm mines. We want also to stress your attention that on February 14th, Russian occupation troops have used artillery to shell homes of civilian population. This happened in the Novoluhanske village in the Donetsk Oblast. Russian forces have used 152 mm system, artillery system, which is forbidden by Minsk agreements, and destroyed the house of one local man. Fortunately, there were no casualties among civilians. One man has sustained minor injuries. According to the fragments which were found on the ground, Krasnopol type artillery projectiles, which are adopted by the armed forces of Russian Federation, were used. In such a way, Russian Federation continues to threaten lives and well-being of civilian population of Donbass region. The situation in the operations area is under full control of the Joint Operation Forces. Our servicemen opened fire in response to the press enemy activity using infantry weapons and by strictly adhering to Minsk agreements. As a result of Russian armed aggression, 10 of our servicemen were wounded in action. They were all transported to military medical facilities where they are being treated. We wish them speedy recovery. We want to inform with grief that two servicemen were killed while defending their home country in the east of Ukraine. We express our sincerest condolences to families and loved ones of our deceased defenders. And now to the information uh, from the main Directorate of Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Command of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation continued to supply temporarily occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts with weapons and ammunition, including those which are forbidden by international conventions. In particular, at the end of January this year, another batch of anti-personnel mines, PMN and OVM-72 were delivered. Beyond that, commissions from the general staff Army Command and Command of the Southern Military Region of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation has continued verification activity within units of First and Second Army Corps of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation to address deficiencies regarding service issues, combat readiness, and technical condition of the assets. Among other things, these commissions are responsible for rotations of commanding officers, which are active service members of the armed forces of Russian Federation. At the same time, Russian Federal Security Service has started to conduct staff changes within so-called ministries of the Russian occupation authorities. As for other news, President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko held a meeting with the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg in Munich. The head of state thanked NATO for its consolidated support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as for a strong condemnation of Russian aggressive actions. Petro Poroshenko highly appreciated NATO's large-scale practical assistance in reforming the security and defense sector of Ukraine in line with NATO standards. 
significant progress of the Ukrainian side on this path was noted. The President of Ukraine underscored the immutability of Ukraine's course of Euro-Atlantic integration, which is now consolidating in the Constitution of Ukraine. The Secretary General commented the adoption of this decision and confirmed that the alliance continued to adhere to the open-door policy. The parties separately discussed the ways of strengthening Ukraine's cooperation with the alliance in response to existing threats in the Black Sea and the Zdiso Azov, in particular with the view to increasing the capabilities of Ukrainian Navy. Minister of Defense of Ukraine Stepan Poltorak has conducting a working trip to NATO headquarters in Brussels on 13th and 14th February 2019. Within NATO Defense Minister's meeting, Minister of Defense of Ukraine has held working breakfast with Minister of Defense of NATO member countries and NATO Secretary General. Queen former meeting with representatives of US, Canada, Great Britain, Poland and Lithuania and a number of bilateral meetings with the acting US Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan, Canadian Minister of National Defense Harjit Sajjan and the Minister of Defense of Romania Gabriel Benjamin Lesh were held. During this meeting, different issues were discussed, including Russian aggressive politics in Azov and Black Sea region and illegal detention of Ukrainian sailors, security situation in and around Ukraine, reforming of the armed forces of Ukraine, strengthening of bilateral and multilateral cooperation in different spheres, and further integration of Ukraine into Euro-Atlantic domain. Chief of General Staff General of the Army of Ukraine, Viktor Muzhenko, has held a meeting with a group of newly appointed generals and admirals of the armed forces of the United States of America, headed by the retired general, Philip Breedlow, within Capstone training program. During the meeting, Viktor Muzhenko has stressed that Ukrainian servicemen highly appreciate assistance from the United States to further strengthen capabilities of the armed forces of Ukraine. American generals were also informed about the situation in the east of Ukraine and in the Black and Azothi regions. This is all information for now. Thank you for your attention. Captain Sharavara Mikhailo from the Press Center of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine.